Utah earthquakes are still continuing after the initial 5.7 earthquake and swarm. And we'll see that they're in an area of the mantle plume that runs from Baja California right into that area and into Yellowstone. And as we saw from the previous video, Cali rattling, California rattles from the Cascadia quake, 4.7, 3.7, days after the 5.3, is because of the subducting mantle. This is a video, this is a picture of the 5.3 that we had a few days ago at the Baja area. That's where the Baja mantle plume is found to start running right through the area under Salt Lake City. And we're going to see that it's an area of liquefaction because it looked like that was a bigger lake that was filled in with the passage of time. And this is exactly where Salt Lake City is located. And here we have a cross section of that mantle plume, as you can see. The left shows the hot areas of the, of the magma, and it's right in the area of the Ring of Fire, as we can see, right through Baja and uh, feeding the west coast high threat volcanoes. That mantle plume is also forked towards Utah and Yellowstone, as you can see there, because of the Farallon plate that is lodged in the uh, uh, subducted under the North American plate on the west coast. So uh, we also know that there are eight volcanoes in Utah. The youngest one, they're pretty young, and the youngest one has erupted 660 years ago. So that was around 1,300, uh, 1,400 AD. We had an eruption, a lava eruption there. And this is the same mantle plume that is feeding Yellowstone. Let's take a look at the uh, maps together so we can have a better idea of the uh, area. And uh, looking from above, everything looks pretty small. And uh, the pieces of the puzzle are very much more easily seen. And we keep in mind this di uh, the um, diagonal here going from Baja right through Utah and into Yellowstone. Okay, so here we are on the uh, Seismo Berkeley map. And this is the original 5.7 that we had a few days ago. And since that BAM, that, that, that explosion of that earthquake, we've had all this going on. And these are only the ones that are over 2.5. Okay, because if we have everything there, it's uh, not going to be easy for us to pick out the larger quakes. And there you go. The red are the past hour and the blue are the past day. And uh, they have felt them, 3.9, they're all shallow. The, this one here has been f reported to USGS, felt by over 5,000 people. And you can imagine tens of thousands have felt it, whereas only 5,000 some odd reported it, okay? This is the 5.7 that we had on the 18th. As, again, it was a shallow earthquake. Uh, the people reported it, almost 36,000 reported it. Of course, millions felt it. Over two and a half million reported feeling it. And this is the this is just today's quake. Uh, again, 79 people reported it. Uh, again, we'll see. We'll, we'll go back to the uh, 5.7. Sorry about that. What happened here? Okay. Um, the 5.7 map. And we'll go to, this is Salt Lake City right here, you can, see, you can see that. Let's go to the aerial so we can see much better. And the shaking, the intensity. Okay, you can see that they only show a certain block, then they stop. Uh, but um, if you were to extrapolate that, it would very well go into Yellowstone, which is right here. Yellowstone is right here, okay? Ridgecrest is right there. And Long Valley is right here, Mondo Lake right there. Uh, it's not that, well, it's closer to Yellowstone, which is right here. Um, in comparison, there's Yellowstone Lake right there. I always uh, see that from this thing sticking out. That's Yellowstone, okay. Um, there it is right there. Oh, sorry, there, Yellowstone Lake is that one there. Okay, Yellowstone Lake is this one here. Right there, okay. 
and uh, this is Hebgen Lake right there. Okay, and maybe we should go to our map here. And here we have Yellow uh, Salt Lake right there. And if we measure the distance in miles, right here, Salt Lake. What's happening? Okay, I did something wrong. Okay. Okay. Right there, it's about 260 miles, and it's about 300 uh, 400 miles to Long Valley Caldera. We've had the Tahoe earthquake as well that shook Long Valley and Lassen Peak. And um, we've had the quake uh, 4.7 in the swarm today that, uh, uh, and the days before that shook Mount Shasta, Mike, uh, Lassen Peak for sure. Okay, so that's what, this is what we're looking at. And I just want you to see the shake map. Okay, it, if we can extrapolate that, it would go up to here. Um, but they stopped, for some reason, they stopped the map over there. Okay, these are the uh, fault lines, as we can see. Okay, take this off so you can see better. And go into the area, and we can see that it's, um, there we go. Okay. And Salt Lake City is here. And as you can see, the geology of this, this is this was once a bigger lake. And you can see the remnants of this right here. There's lakes around here as well, everywhere there. There you go. You can see some more lakes. It's very low, it's very low lying to the level of the water. Okay. There, there, and the other one down here. And we can go to the liquefaction map now. The big, the big quake has a liquefaction estimate right there, and Salt Lake City is right here. Salt Lake City is right there. Graphic, Salt Lake City is right here, as you can see. Okay, so um, we have had damage at the temple, the Latter-day Saints temple, with the spire and the statue having damage and uh, some bricks and things falling off buildings because the sediment there is very soft. doesn't mean that the buildings have fallen. It's just that they have sustained damage because of these earthquakes, and um, they're still ongoing. They're still ongoing, as we can see in the map okay, right there. That's today, 3.9 was reported by 5,000, as we said. Okay, they don't have any details on that. But, um, oh, they do, okay. The Intermountain Seismic Belt, prominent north-south trending zone, recorded seismicity in the Intermountain West, including Wasatch Front, okay. The faults, we saw the faults, and they're, okay. Basically, pulling out, and uh, put this up, okay. As you can see, the red of the past hour, so we're, they're ongoing. Okay, this is this is our line from Baja, right here. And that mantle plume splits to the west and splits to the east, up to Yellowstone, because the Farallon plate is lodged, as we saw in the video before this one. They had this cross section through Vancouver Island and a cross section through Portland, through Oregon. They found that the uh, Oregon mantle, the Oregon uh, Farallon plate, uh, is another piece. It's in pieces. It's not the same piece as the one under Vancouver, as you'll see from the uh, uh, previous map. And it's uh, lighter. The one going through here is lighter, and it, go, it goes deeper. Uh, and it's in it's this Farallon plate is in pieces, and they're not they're not the same makeup. So um, this is what is around the Gorda plate area, Oregon, is not the same plate as it's part of the plate, but there are two different pieces. So this Farallon plate is lodged here, causing the split of that mantle plume 
that goes into this area here. And of course, that's the um, cause of the uh, Rocky Mountain area. And this is the area of Utah with uh, eight volcanoes. And here we are on Volcano Discovery with Utah's eight volcanoes. And we can uh, back out to see where they're coming from. There we go. Baja, and this way up to, that's Yellowstone right there, the northwest corner of Wyoming, right there. That's the line that they're taking. And uh, you can see the, I think the Black Rock one was the one that was 660 years ago was the latest eruption. There we go. Okay. Black Rock Desert Volcano Field of a group of small volcanoes. So it's a volcanic field. So this thing here is not just, it's a volcanic field. It's a volcanic field. Okay. Eight volcanoes pointing this way. A volcanic field in south central Utah, eastern margin of the Great Basin, is the youngest volcanic area in Utah, containing both Utah's youngest known rhyolite dome, 400,000 years ago, and its youngest lava flow, roughly 660 year old ice springs lava flow located in ice springs. These lava flows ex extend four kilometers north and west of Black Rock Station. So that's the youngest one. And we have all these eight volcanoes. Okay, and the smelter knolls, I never saw this one. Lava domes. Okay, pulling out. Provo, Utah, Salt Lake. That's the one to the south, as we see. Pliocene rhyolitic lava dome, nearby basaltic volcanism, about 310,000 years ago. Okay. So we see that uh, these were active um, after the Yellowstone eruptions. The big one, the super volcanic eruption in Yellowstone was 600, the last one was 640,000 years ago, which was a double eruption 170 years apart. And then we had one 70,000 years ago, which was a small lava eruption, not small, but a lava eruption, it wasn't a super eruption. And we had 80 eruptions since then. 80 eruptions in the Yellowstone since then. And of course, we have these things here as well. And again, they're the same mantle plume. So now, what's happening there? Um, uh, we don't, let's go to all the earthquakes. Okay, there we go. Okay. And, um, and you see the uh, Yellowstone as well. This is normal activity, of course. Okay, it's shallow, normal activity. Okay, normal Yellowstone activity. And um, uh, and there is a mantle plume there. Okay, just like there is a mantle plume under uh, the mid-continental rift, going like a horseshoe shape this way. And there's magma under there as well. They don't know where it's coming from, even though we do have magma under this area because these are our volcanic islands. All these are volcanic islands. This one is today's, yeah, Cayman Island. Okay, felt reported felt by 27 people. So we have uh, that going on in Utah. So all of you there, please be very careful and safe because um, it's an ongoing swarm. Of course, the 5.7 looks at that it was the major one and everything else is uh, rattling because of that earthquake. They're aftershocks. Okay, please be very careful. And um, I will be posting uh, a series of videos that uh, will be for our spiritual benefit, because I'm sure through all this trial, a lot of saints will come out, a lot of living saints will come out of this, as have many times in the past. Even the greatest of sinners became the greatest of saints. So uh, don't belittle yourself. You're, you're one of a kind. Each one of you is one of a kind and a potential living saint. And um, our prayers are heard and can uh, heal the whole world and the whole universe. The whole universe. Uh, and we are told uh, from our Christian Orthodox saints 
If we are to read two chapters of the Old Testament, one chapter of the New Testament every day, in a year God will give us uh, theosis, which is divine union with him. So that's what I aim to do, uh, to listen to that word and do that. And he knows that we're asking him for that, and he will give it to us because that's what he promised. So I will be doing that too every day. Um, it will last about what, half an hour, an hour, I don't know what it, how long. Two chapters of the Old Testament, because the Old Testament is twice as long as the New Testament, and one chapter of the New Testament, and in a year, and uh, we would have finished. This is what St. Catherine of Egypt did. Her monastery is in Mount Sinai. Uh, she didn't believe in Christ, and uh, this is what she did in a, for a year, reading the Holy Bible, and uh, uh, that's when uh, the Mother of God spoke to her and uh, brought her to see she had the vision of Jesus Christ, and he gave her a ring, a ring with a flower on it, uh, in her vision, and she woke up the next day, she had it on her finger. So it was actually a true uh, experience, a divine experience. So the biggest, and, and she wasn't even, she didn't even believe in Christ, so you can see that after a year of reading the Bible, what happened to her. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing, and please Pray for the whole, let's pray for the whole world that our Lord has mercy on us. So I'll leave links below for this and uh, please be very careful. Take very good care of each other. God bless you. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.